So, um, <clears throat> I had so many interesting uh, and uh, amazing, uh, I heard so many amazing uh, ideas today that uh, I was like, whoa, I'm exploding <laughs> and taking notes. But one of the best was like, I met some, a farmer, no, his name is Poncha, Loren Poncha. I'm sure he's from Italy. You know, is, uh, he was talking about fog. And fog for me, it's magic. In f you know, it's like people in my region, fog is the reason because we, we can produce uh, an aged Parmigiano Reggiano, balsamic vinegar, you know, in the food valley. And I always thought that fog was like the magic things behind everything. People, they were thinking I'm, I'm crazy, but I know there is someone else that thinks that fog is very important. So I love Mr. Poncha. Thank you for, you know, support me in this idea of fog and dream. You know, uh, yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a chef, and uh, uh, in 2000, um, 15, uh, in, uh, with uh, all my friends, like mm, I think the most influential uh, chef in the world, we decide to feed the planet at the Universal Exposition our own way. Um, the theme of the Universal Exposition was feed the planet energy for life. So we decide to, to, you know, to step out of our kitchen and uh, feed the planet as we were thinking. So we create a cultural project to fight food waste. We were f using the inevitable food waste uh, of the universal exposition and transform into an opportunity to feed uh, the people in need. We decide to transfer knowledge, you know, as education. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as, a, as education, knowledge that to the volunteers, to the, you know, they could really understand what we were doing. Hundreds and hundreds of volunteers. And uh, what is that? 7.3 to 1. Uh, is the minute? You know, I'm not going to stay there. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, transfer this knowledge was very important because uh, it's like our heritage, it was our heritage. And uh, communicate to the world. It's not a charity project. You know, charity is like you step you know, on tiptoes and you, know, you do it without you know, any noise, anything. And, but here, we have to communicate that we need to go back with, uh, and, uh, and re-embrace the mentality of our grandmothers. I grew up with a grandmother that was very strict. If I didn't finish what I had in a plate, you know, I couldn't leave the table. So that's the way the approach is that I'm transferring to my, to all my team. We decide last minute to use the power of hospitality, transforming the, what we were thinking was a soup kitchen into a real place for uh, hospitality. We broke the walls in a world that, that everyone wants to build walls. We broke all the walls and we said, welcome, come in, have fun, enjoy. We are here for you. And uh, you know, that was the moment in which we decide to use all the volunteers, hundreds, to serve the people at the table a proper meal of three, four courses. And through the power of beauty, you know, we engage architects, designer, artists. They're the first one who jump on this project, the best ones. And we create an amazing space, and we have learned, we didn't know what to expect. But we knew that beauty was creating something incredible. And through the power of beauty, you know, we discover that beauty can rebuild the dignity of the people. So what we did, we are building a strong community and, a, and a, you know, healthy, equitable system. Today, and we are here in this uh, 
amazing space. Amazing space not for the architecture, but amazing space because it's full of amazing minds. Today we had a meeting with these guys from Mark, Joe, um, Paolo, who flew from Los Angeles, Teresa, and they decide to build for us a platform worldwide, you know, a worldwide platform in which we, we can share with the world and all the thousands of thousands of volunteers. Think about that. In our project in Paris, there are just in Paris, 4,000 people they want to help in waiting lists for volunteering. It's crazy. But it's this. We are there. We are like, we are ready, ready to change the world. And we are all here together. Farmers, fishermen, cheesemakers, you know, chefs. Everyone uh, is here. And, uh, you know, this platform is going to build uh, the bridge between technology and innovation with human fragility. That's what, what it's going to be. So I just want to say a big applause for Salesforce and, and their minds. You know, this is something amazing for me. Sustainability. Today, fine dining restaurants are in the spotlight more than ever. And today, we, chef, have the responsibility to be a tangible example of sustainability. And we are leading the, the, the way to change habits, starting from our own kitchens. Chef now has a voice, you know? They, have, uh, they step back from our kitchen, and uh, with that voice, we have a responsibility to send out a message. We have a responsibility to study, research, and apply new ideas and new technique to fight food waste, and lead the way to a healthy and sustainable system. We have a responsibility to listen to our farmers, cheesemakers, artisans, to listen and support our team, and to listen to our guests. For me, imagining a sustainable future means to look back to my tradition, to our traditions. From a critical point of view, keeping the best of the past and pushing it forward through imagination, creativity, intuition, and culture. Does we need another restaurant? We need places to share our stories. We need to exceed our expectation. We need to break our habits. And often, we need to go behind what we already know. If we can imagine a place with an ethical approach, where people, ingredients, spaces, and ideas collaborate together, create a sustainable environment on a different levels, then we can imagine a future where people can express and give their very best an ingredient can be used at the very first stage because uh, taking advantage of their potential. My grandmother was always saying that using an overripe tomato or, or a two days old bread, you know, was a, a, a very important cultural approach. If I don't ask the right question to the ingredients, how can I have a dialogue with that ingredients? If I have a piece of bread, it's not a piece of bread. It's a piece of bread just baked. And you have to serve, as they did yesterday night at Atelier, you know, and was amazing. But if it has two years old, or two days old, or five days old, you, have, you can make bruschetta or panzanella. Or maybe breadcrumbs, transform into breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs, they're going to become breadcrumbs noodle. 
So this is the way you, you approach. It's about knowledge. It's about vision. It's about the past. It's about passion. It's what we do. You know, it's ask the right ingredients to an overripe tomato, and you, you're going to have an amazing result in a beautiful red tomato sauce. This is the point. So physical spaces are part of a sustainable approach. If you're able to see a potential of, su of something existing, you can stop the building fever and turn an abandoned space into a new structure and uh, return beauty back to the community, as we did in every refectory. Ideas are a fundamental part of sustainable movement as well. Being clear and focused about what you are doing and why enable every action to be powerful and meaningful. Without this in mind, excellence is hard to come by. And we are not only talking about food, we are also talking about the quality of life and those around us. We are talking about being respectful of each other and everything that surrounds us. We can stand out and make a conscious choice every single day. Every time we go to the market, when we shop, or even when we decide to spend quality time with our families. Sustainability is more than a matter of ingredients. It is a mindset that influences every action we take. Wake up, everybody, and question yourself. Take nothing for granted. Pursue ethical action. Fight for the good and the beautiful. They are two sides of the same coin. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Come on, everybody.